Gotcha. All right, so moving on to the final segment. Um, this is kind of what we've been talking about. We talked about it on previous streams, and we get in arguments in the office about it. Republicans lost in Kentucky, and Republicans lost in Louisiana at the statewide level, at the gubernatorial elections. Um, there's a lot of minutia we can go into about, you know, um, Matt Bevin losing the suburbs around Lexington and John Bell Edwards cleaning up um, in, in the suburbs where he needed to. Jay Miles talked about that a little bit. We'll go in here. But, like, does this mean if you're Mitch McConnell in, in Kentucky, you're worried about what's happening? If you look at what happened in Louisiana, is this the, the forecasting, the foreshadowing for, you know, an even bigger blue wave into 2020? I mean, basically everyone's trying to figure it out. Um, and we've got some people who have some different opinions on there, but let's, let's start with this. Alex L. Dunson, make the case for if you're a Republican, you look at what happened in Louisiana and you look at what happened in Kentucky, you should be worried. So 2018 was a blowout year for Republicans in, in Congress. And I'll say Congress, including Senate, just because the Senate map was pretty stacked against Democrats. Um, so if, you, if you're looking at 2020, what you're hoping is for the national environment to get better than that. And I don't think that any of these races tell you that the national uh, environment is getting better. It's staying about the same, maybe slightly better than it was in 2018, but not really anything of note. Um, you still have Democrats competing in races that um, are typically, you know, uh, Republican leaning, you still have the sort of urban and suburban rush away from the Republican Party, granted with a uh, corresponding rural rush towards the Republican Party. And so if you're concerned about what happened in 2018, I don't see anything here that tells me that that is ending going into 2020. All right, Alex Podcool, PhD, give us the counter argument. Uh, I mean, there's some yeah. Th there's definitely interesting discussion on this question. Um, I, I I think there are maybe two points that I want to make in response to Al Dunson. The first is uh, some of these the, the gubernatorial election result outcomes in both Kentucky and Louisiana um, didn't even track with other statewide races races that were happening concurrently on the ballots. On the screen right now, we have uh, uh, we have a map of the Kentucky governor election as well as uh, the Kentucky attorney general election. And here we see uh, uh, Matt Bevin totally underwater in, in way more counties um, than his Republican uh, attorney general candidate, Daniel Cameron. Um, especially in some of the eastern part of the state, we see that Cameron uh, just outperformed Bevin. And we see a similar thing, and, 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 and that was not only just attorney general. On the same nights that Bevin lost, Republicans had major wins for treasurer, auditor, agriculture commissioner, secretary of state, and attorney general. And we saw a similar pattern in Louisiana. So Austin, if we could go to the next slide. If we, here we have uh, just an outline of the precincts in Louisiana. On, this is just the election day vote. But comparing uh, Risponi against the Republican Secretary of State candidate. So on the x-axis, we have the Secretary of State candidate's performance. On the y-axis, we have uh, Risponi. Now, if uh, it were a perfect alignment, we would see the, all those dots aligned on where that dark red line is at the 50, uh, which is a slope of one. But what we see here is that consistently in almost every single precinct across the state, uh, Eddie Risponi was 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 way underwater compared to his fellow Republican running for Secretary of State, which those two facts just seem to indicate to me just uh, that maybe it was just the top of the ticket didn't perform that well, but other Republicans were. And then the second point that I want to make is rather minor, but um, just to respond to Alex, you're talking about kind of the national wins that are at play here, but these national wins happen within particular states. So you could look nationally and look at the unpopularity and the, and the high unfavorable that are attached to President Trump. But according to our own uh, exit poll in the state of Louisiana, we saw that Trump was doing very well in head-to-head -head matchups. He was up 20 against a generic Democrat. We saw his favorables through the roof. And so these national 
national wins matter, but the nat if we look at the voters' own perspectives on national politics in Louisiana, if I'm a national Republican in the state, I'm feeling pretty well. So real quick, if we go to the final slide, to sum up everyone's arguments, I mean, Podcool basically says, look at the performance, look at the other Republicans running statewide um, in those states, and, and that's an example of highlighting the fact that these candidates, these Republican governors who lost, they lost because of them, not because of the national trend. And Alex L. Dunson's contention is this is just highlighting the effects that we're going to see in suburban um, and rural districts going into the 2020 election. Um, I think this is a debate we're going to have pretty much up until about 1 a.m. the day after election when we have enough results back and we're looking enough at Jay Miles maps to figure out whether or not um, President Trump lost some of these areas against, you know, whichever Democratic candidate and maybe whichever Democratic candidate and independent candidate he's running against. Um, so the people who weren't arguing today, Drew, real quick, yay or nay, what we saw in these two states is bad news for Republicans in 2020 or we should just take them by themselves? I'm with uh, Dr. Podcool on this one. Dr. Podcool. Um, Jay Miles, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, if I were a Republican, I would still be feeling decently well. I mean, a perfect example of this would be in 2015 when Edwards won by 12 points. Uh, David Bitter the next day said that he would step down. And, well, guess what? The next year... The Republicans had no problem holding a bad, better seat in the Senate. So there's that. But I would say it, it it probably could be better for Republicans in that, let's say, if Hillary Clinton were president right now, she would, of course, be in every ad. So and they could have made they could have maybe even beat Edwards just on that. So could it be better for Republicans? Yes. But I would still, you know, I don't think Trump is in any position that he could lose Louisiana or Kentucky. So uh, on the whole, I think it doesn't I, – I wouldn't read too much into it. Got it. I, I think we're all on the same page there. So we've eaten up a half an hour of time. Um, this was an interesting experiment. Most of us were not as not – as, inebriated as we've been on election nights so maybe we're less fun right pod cool um <laughs> but uh thanks for listening and we'll, we'll do a little bit more of this as we we're adding on more people and having more people like miles on kind of break this down um drew anything else you want to close up with uh if you don't already ha get our newsletter sign up for that at decisiondeskhq.com also whatever stream you're liking on follow us so you can get uh, any updates and know when we're going to be on the air cool thanks guys all right, thank you all.